This lesson features a new command called an else command. The important thing to note about the else command is that it only works inside an if statement. So let's have a look at how it works. So if I add a repeat until finish tile loop, um, I'm going to add an if statement inside there. And it's going to say, if we're on a white tile, turn left. And I'm going to use the new else statement, else walk forward. So the else sort of means otherwise. So what we're saying here is if we're on a white tile, turn left, otherwise walk forward. So if we step through this program, we'll see it skips this part if we're on a white tile, because we're not on a white tile, and it jumped to the else and it walked forward. And then we, again, it skipped this bit and jumped to the else to walk forward. Now we're on the a white tile, we press step, it then, uh, if we're on the white tile, yes we are, so it turns left. Uh, and then if we keep doing that, because we're on a white tile, it will always turn left. So if I run that, you'll see it just keeps, it just keeps spinning left and it never does the else statement because it's always on a white tile now. Obviously this program's not very useful, but it does show you how the else statement works. So let's reset the program and start again. So now we're going to try and solve the problem using the else statement. If we look at the puzzle, we can see that uh, we've got white tiles here, 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 and here. And it looks like we need to turn every time we get to a white tile. So here we turn left, here we turn left, here we turn right, and here we turn right. So the rule seems to be, if we're on a white tile that also has a coin on it, turn left, Otherwise, if we're just on a white tile with no coin on it, turn right. So what does that look like in code? So first of all, we use the repeat until finish tile command, and we're going to walk. So we're going to say, let's walk until we get to the finish tile. Then we're going to say, uh, if we're on a white tile, we're going to jump into a function. So if we're on a white tile, we want to turn left or we want to turn right based on whether there's a coin or not. So inside the function, we're going to say, if we're on a coin, we want to turn left. Uh, and we also want to pick the coin up as well. Otherwise, or else, we want to turn right. So let's step through this program and see this in action. So press step, we walk forward. If we're on the white tile, we're going to jump into the function. We're not on the white tile, so we don't jump into the function. So now we press step. If we're on the white tile, we are on the white tile, so we jump into the function. And because we're on the coin, we turn left and we're also going to pick up, so we pick up as well. And we press step, and you see it skips the else bit because this bit was true. And we come back out to the main program and we do step. If we're on a white tile, jump into the function. We're not. If we're on a white tile, jump into the function. We are, and we're on a uh, coin, so we turn left and we pick up. So if I keep stepping, keep step again. Now we're saying if we're on a white tile, we are on a white tile, we jump in. We're not on a coin, so we skip that bit and we go to the else bit and we turn right instead. And if I run the program, you see it does the same thing for the last one. And then we get to the finish tile. So with all the levels in this section, you have a else statement and you will almost always have to put an if statement inside another if statement. And I recommend you do what I do here, which, which is that I added a function and then I put the other if statement inside the function because it just makes it easier to read your program.